Does that have to stay right here? Or can it be a little? It can be a little bit off too. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for joining. Um, I'll just give a brief summary of where we're at so far. I think um, obviously this is the final day of the formal camp. We get started tomorrow. Um, I was very happy first off with the way our prospects performed in uh, in Buffalo. Um, at the prospects challenge there to kind of start things off for us. Um, you know, I thought J.D. Forrest and, and Eric Heasley had the group well prepared and went in and, and uh, they performed well to get us off on the right foot. In particular, I think Sam Poulin, uh, Braden Yeager, uh, Joel Bloomquist, um, Avery Hayes and Jack St. Ivany really showed well at, uh, at that camp. And then, and then all of those, uh, all those prospects kind of stacked uh, a good training camp in Pittsburgh on top of that. So that was very positive, especially from my perspective, coming in and, and getting to know uh, uh, those people at the prospect level and familiarizing, familiarizing myself more with our prospect pool was important for me that we got some great performances there. Um, it's been great the last couple of days or week. Uh, we've had Owen Pickering back and, and practicing with our group. Um, it's great to see Owen out there. He's obviously a highly touted prospect and, and uh, one of the one of the guys that we're counting on here down the road. Um, so it's been great to, to see him back from injury and getting NHL practices before uh, before he gets back to Swift Current here in the next day or so. Um, with regards to our actual training camp, I think all of us enjoyed the competition that was there. I um, thought the coaching staff did an excellent job throughout the summer getting ready and preparing the guys going into camp. Uh, I was extremely impressed with Sully. Todd, uh, Mike Felucci, Andy Kyoto, Ty Hennis, uh, and, and the way that they had the team ready for training camp, and then the execution of uh, the installation of the different systems day in and day out um, was a lot of fun to watch and, and uh, see how they went about their, their business on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, certainly can see why Sully is uh, regarded uh, how he is having the chance to work with him uh, day in and day out since June. Um, with regards to our team at this point, I think we're uh, very, very happy uh, with the competition in camp between the players and, and where it's netted out. We're still in the final process of making some final decisions, as happens at this time of year. We have till today at 5 p.m. to do so. We're going to take all of our time, um, see what happens uh, on the waiver wire at 2 o'clock, and then submit our final roster by 5. Uh, but in all likelihood, we'll start with... Uh, We'll start with 22 players on our roster um, and uh, be ready to roll from uh, from there. Um, I think I'm very happy with the depth that we have, especially up front. Um, and we've got a little bit fortunate on the waiver wire there with uh, with some of our depth guys getting through. I think that gives us a lot of options as the year goes on. So with what we start with today uh, and tomorrow, we'll certainly uh, we're expecting our guys that have already gone down to Wilkes-Barre Scranton to continue to push. Um, and, and keep the pressure on. And I, I think that the players who are here know the level of competition that it was. And that'll help us as a team throughout the year uh, and continuing to uh, foster that type of competition and, and push everyone to be at their absolute best. Um, you know, on, from the front office side, I think I've been very happy with our group. And, and um, especially we've added Doug Wilson and Trent Mann in the last month or so. Uh, they add a great level of experience. It's be very, very helpful to me and to our whole group there as well. Um, so all that said, we're at the very end of camp. I think generally is a very positive and optimistic feeling uh, all throughout the building and throughout the facility um, about the team. Now I think it's up to up to us as a group and up to the team to turn that optimism and, and uh, turn it into an earned uh, confidence. And uh, I think last year, uh, the group here found out full well how important every single point is. And so starting tomorrow night, we have a chance to start to try to put those on the board and get rolling. So uh, that said, I'll turn it over to any questions that anyone has. Fire away. Hey, Kyle. I uh, wanted to ask you about Jake Gensel. He's yeah. going into the last year of his contract. Um, yep. How big of a priority is it for you to try to lock him up? Would you be willing to talk with Ben during the season, or are you comfortable letting this go until next off season? Well, I've got a great relationship with Ben, Josh, and, and uh, the major priority right now has just been on Jake's health. So there's there's been no real uh, focus on anything other than uh, other than the, the health uh, portion of it. And uh, seeing um, you know, he had surgery late uh, early August, and you know he's pushed as I think most everyone in the, most people in the room know better than I. He's a you know day to day 
the level of competitor that he is is uh, is unsurprising. So it's not a true surprise that he's he's at this point and, and push trying to push his way to be ready to go for tomorrow. We'll see how it goes today and tomorrow morning. And, and I guess as Sully's outlined, it'll be a kind of a day by day decision. We have to do what's right for him in the long run. With regards to the contract, I think it's with Ben and I's relationship. We can we can have discussion about that as as he wants. But it's right now the priority has been on his health and getting it back up to 100. percent uh, through the preseason, just what have been your initial impressions of how Eric Carlson's fit here, especially on the power play? Well, I'm not so much. Uh, I, I know that, um, I think we all know that special teams are hugely important, but I don't um, put a whole lot of uh, stock into the, you know, the, the preseason portions of it. I think we'll get into the year. Uh, Todd has done a great job being prepared on, on that front. and. Um, I don't think there's. A, I don't. I don't have a whole lot of question personally as to how Eric's going to fit on the power play with the group. I think Eric is the type of player uh, instinctually that's going to find a way to make it fit and work. Uh, no, everyone is not going to have to adjust around him. He'll find a way to get the most out of others as he facilitates. Um, my impressions of him off the ice have been. Uh, I've been extraordinarily impressed with him. His energy that he brings every day, but also the professionalism, how hard he works, the the condition that he came into camp. In, um, you know, it was not something that I knew um, when when we acquired him uh, that to that degree. I knew he was very well prepared, very professional. Obviously, his pedigree speaks for itself. But to see how prepared he was and and what he does each day to get himself uh, ready for practice, ready for games, has been quite impressive. So, um, and then the energy level and confidence that he brings each day has been uh, it's been it's been great to see and well received by everybody and. Um, it's uh, it's been quite refreshing and and uh, he's a lot of fun to have. Hi, uh, happy Thanksgiving, by the way. Um, uh, it's Columbus Day, right? Is yeah. th Thanksgiving up north too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, Did you say uh, happy Columbus Day. Happy Thanksgiving. Sure, but it, uh, it is Columbus Day. Right? That's correct. Yes. Do you say? But do you say happy Columbus Day? Or just, Some do. Okay. Well, happy uh, Columbus Day, sir. Thank you, um, Jeff Carter. Uh, uh, yeah. Alcane in career has been a prominent player in this league. Right now, it looks like it might be more of a fourth line role for him. Um, just what's been your observations of um, how he's maybe adapted to that role, and just what do you think he can still offer this team at this stage of his career? Um, it's, it's. I mean, I've known Jeff a very long time, uh, and so I, you, you can you know what he's about. You, you know, he's had he's had a, a wonderful career uh, already, and I think at this point, what I've seen with him is. Um, you know, we, it's, it's interesting because when I was, you know, previous and we have Jason Spezza here on our staff and it was very similar, right? Outstanding career, high in the lineup and then, you know, late in his 30s, it adapted into a, into a lower in the lineup role and contributed to the team in, in many different facets. So Jeff, to me, he's in that role now, but I think it's, it's, you know, he's lining up there now. But is he capable of doing more if needed during the year? That's what we're trying to always have that depth and, and have him prepared to do. Um, but we tried to build out the team deep enough so we didn't have to rely on every single person to to be firing on all cylinders at all times because it's just not um, it's just not going to happen during the course of a year. So we've tried to build out the team so it's deep enough so we can slot people a little bit lower uh, and then try to get the most out of them. And and in Jeff's case, um, I think he's had a, he's had a very good training camp. He had a very good training camp, good exhibition season, and. Um, I think the you know the doubt that may be there will probably fuel him to show that he's still capable of being a, a strong and contributing member of a, of a contending team, and that's what we expect from him. Uh, Kyle, are you satisfied with your bottom six forwards? Uh, why, or maybe might what what might you want to improve? Um, I, I don't know that uh, you ever feel fully satisfied. Um, you're always trying to improve the team every single day any way that you can um, you know without tinkering just for the sake of tinkering um, at this point I would say from where we hope to be when we walked into camp Dan yeah I am happy with where it's at right now not only with what's there right now with the group and with the addition of Harkins last week but also with the play of a lot of the players during training camp uh, whether that was Zahorna, Hinnestroza, Nylander, Janssen, uh, Pustinen, all those guys perform quite well, and um, so I'm happy both with where it's at right now, but also the options that we have in case there is some ineffectiveness that we're able to um, we're able to move guys in there. I mean, Drew O'Connor had a, had an excellent camp, and he's up in the lineup right now. If Jake, you know, when Jake is good to go, you know, Drew now we know he's capable of playing up there, but he'll slot down into the 
into the bottom six per se. Um, but, you know, he, that option and knowing that we have those options, I think is a real positive for us. So I'm happy with it now, but I'm also very happy with the depth that's there and, and what's available. Kyle, uh, you mentioned what the team went through last season. Uh, I think any one person can probably have their own idea of what success is, but yeah. to you, what's the minimum that this group would have to accomplish for you to consider this season successful? Um, I try never to put it in the, in the uh, look at it, what's a bare minimum. I think the, the, the standard that's set here when you walk in every day is that the group expects that they're going to win each day and that they're going to stack all those days uh, one on top of the other, and it's going to lead to contending and winning the Stanley Cup. That's the the only um, that's the only thing that's talked about here, and the only thing that that the people within the room strive for. And I I know that um, based on the fact that the team missed the playoffs last year, that on the outside there's there's not that same belief. And I think that's totally fair. It's up to us to earn that belief back. And for me, it's been great to be a part of, of that uh, of, of that group and try to help as best I possibly can learn from them and what's got them to hold that as their standard uh, and, and try to supplement and add to the group as, as best we possibly can across everything, roster, staff, systems, to try to help the team um, get its way back to winning the Stanley Cup again. So um, I think if we don't do that, that'll be everyone will look back and say we didn't reach our objective. Um, I think at the end of the year, it's easier to, to look back and say the year was successful or not. But as of right now, it's focused on having, you know, having a great start to the year, having a great final practice day today, and then just keep stacking every single day, one on top of the other, um, and put ourselves back to where the Pittsburgh Penguins want to be. Kyle, um, every year it's discussed, at least in the media and sometimes by coaches, about a certain the league moving in a certain style based off who wins. Um, the Penguins brand has, has been scoring and skill. They seem to have that with the, the team you've built this year. Do you feel that is a counterpunch to the way the league is going? Um, uh, and why did you feel strongly about building the team that way? Um, yeah, I think that uh, when you in, in trying to study it and learn from the previous mistakes that, that I've made, uh, Rob, and there have been plenty well documented, uh, and there'll be more. Um, I think that when you start to, when you build your plan or you build your system out, you have to, um, you have to, you have to build it in very thoroughly in, in a way that what your team wants to be about. So how you want to play, how you want to acquire players, how you, the type of coaching staff you want type of people you, you have in, in your facility across all systems but when in, and, and um, departments. When it comes to style of play, I think the biggest, when I look back at the, my own mistakes or errors or just trying to study them across the league and, and other sports, it's when you have, your, your, you have your system built out and you've fallen a little bit short and then you adapt it based on the team that's won the last year and you don't stick with your uh, you don't stand by your convictions and you don't stick with your, your way of operating here. I guess Sully says it, the, the DNA of the team is offense. So if we try to uh, flip that at this stage, um, it's not really something that I believe in and it's not really something that the group in the locker room believes in. And the group has been successful by playing that way and, and winning uh, that way. And I think the easy retort would be, well, they haven't won of late. And my view is that it's on when, when it doesn't work out and, and when we fall short, it's on me in this, in this role um, to try to get us back to that point. I think that's part that comes with this role. You get judged on it. When it doesn't go well, it's on, it's on me at the end. So my view of it is we're going to continue to build that way, supplement it, add around it with anything that we need. If it doesn't work at the end of the year, that's on, that's on me, and I, and I take responsibility for that. So um, I think that the group here has had success in a certain way. My beliefs are that a fall, and I think that why this was a, a great fit for, for me and for our family was that my beliefs are very closely tethered to that. They're not identical. Um, and so we're just got to continue to, to build out that way and, and look back at what hasn't worked, look back at where we've been a bit short and try to adapt and, and bring in different people that can, uh, that can help us move there. Uh, Kyle, you just spoke pretty highly of the prospects in the system. Um, is it feasible to say that some of the elder ones, uh, like Sam Boulin, might be able to see extended time at the NHL level this season? 
Yeah, I, I, I don't think Sam is that old. Uh, but, uh, I mean, he's been in the system for a while. Um, you know, I, I think with Sam, uh, I was really proud of Sam and, and, the, and the camp that he had, and I think he should be very proud of himself. It's well documented uh, what he went through last year. Um, and so for him to come in and right from day one of, of uh, training, of the prospect tournament practice day through to when we assigned him down last week, the decision to, dis to assign him down was – I just feel like he's he's going to be better suited playing huge minutes for Wilkesbury and being a hugely reliable player for Wilkesbury, especially considering the time miss uh, last season, um, than he would be as the 12th or 13th forward here and and playing center there and, and playing it well. So, I think that if Sam just keeps on stacking up the days and weeks as he has um, early here in, in September through October, that he's going to push himself to earn his way back on. So. Can I see him spending significant time in the NHL this year? Absolutely, based on everything we've seen from him so far. Alex, uh, Nylander is trying to make his way into this league. Uh, and uh, What do you feel like are the missing pieces for him to make that happen? I, I think with Alex, I think everyone uh, – so I, if, you, if you go back through his camp, I thought the first game, uh, the first uh, exhibition game against Columbus, he was outstanding. And then uh, in, in the subsequent games – and, and practices, I thought he just he dipped a little bit. And I think w when the conversation with Alex in the, the years that he clearly has the at the end of the camp when we put him on waivers was that you know and, and I've seen Alex he played in the OHL and Mississauga in his draft year and um, obviously very familiar with the family. I think the thing with Alex that I see is um, he has the talent. It's just it's just continuing to execute on it every single day in practice and in game. I, I would be shocked if by the end of the year he hasn't established himself as a full-time NHL guy and that's my expectation of him and, and the conversation with him is he recognized was just having to continue to keep that focus and um, consistency on a day-to-day -day basis in training and practice and then that'll translate itself to the game so that's what we're pushing Alex on obviously there's a huge amount of belief in him he was re-signed here last year at the end of the year he earned his way up at the end of the year last year and where we want to get with Alex is that he's able to use his talent and his strength on the puck to uh, to exert that every single day across 82 games. And I know it's not it's that's the absolute top um, that we're aiming for, and that's where we need to push him to. Kyle, what was the first thing you thought of when you saw Sidney Crosby go going after Peyton Krebs in Buffalo the other night? And my real question is. When you think of a team's identity, mm -hmm. where does that rank as far as team toughness, sticking up for each other? Where does that rank for your hockey team? Um, well, you never, I never like to see Sid fighting, but I loved the moment for the team uh, because I think you hear all these things about Sid when you come in here, and then every single day you see a number of things that back it all up because you can't really believe on the outside that it's real. Um, and it's more than real and every day you see more and more things from him on the leadership side commitment how he brings other people with him to everything it's not just about him and his routine he wants the team to be together I think the thing that I didn't like was on the in the Wednesday night game against Detroit we had a couple of their guys go after Harkins and we didn't really do anything about it we just try to get through it and skate to the bench and when I've always observed the Penguins from the outside it's whenever there's something uh, that happens in a game they attack it as a group um, and it's team toughness. There, there's not a true enforcer per se, um, but you know you're not going to get away with anything against them, even if the team's a little bit bigger uh, and a little bit more physical, that they're going to stand up for themselves. And so I think Sid embodies that most, unsurprisingly, and it was great to see him do that on Friday, and I think it sets the tone for our team going into the year about what's expected if we find ourselves in those situations. And, um, you know, with Sid, you know, he's accomplished – nearly everything you can want to accomplish in hockey. Well, he has accomplished everything you want to accomplish. But the amazing thing about him is that, you know, you see on the, the practice day in Cole Harbor, as an example, he skates it on, onto the ice and he has the biggest smile on his face that you could imagine seeing from a hockey player. And it's, he just, he loves it an incredible amount, loves uh, leading the group and, and uh, is determined to, to continue to win. And I think um, we should never uh, take for granted how special that is to be around someone like that each day.